Good morning children. Welcome back to Standard 4 Literature. In this video, I am going to teach you a beautiful poem, The River, written by Valerie Bloom. Watch the video attentively and carefully. So let's start by the introduction of the poetess Valerie Bloom. Valerie Bloom was born in Jamaica and came to England in 1979. She studied English with African and Caribbean studies at the University of Kent at Canterbury. She writes poetry in English and Jamaican patois for all ages and has performed her work throughout the world. With many television and radio appearances, her poetry is included in a number of anthologies and she tutors regularly for schools and colleges. Valerie Bloom has been awarded an honorary master degree for the University of Kent and lives in Kent. In 2008, she published The Tribe and a So Life Co and was awarded an MBE for services to poetry. Her latest collection, Jaws, Claws and Things with Wings with the illustrator Matt Robertson was published in 2013. Children, now you take out your Mulberry book of Standard 4 and turn to page number 122, The Riven. I will recite the poem for you and then uh, I will do the summary and then the explanation of the stanzas. Okay, children? A river journey from the mountains to the plants. In this poem, the poet describes the river as a, if it is a person who does different things and has many different moods. So, it's a poem about a river journey from the mountain to the plains. And in this poem, the poet has described the river as if it is a person, means as, it, if, as if it is a human being and do activities like them and does different things and has many different moods. So, we can say that river is doing many things and river has many moods and it is like the person. So, recitation of the poem. The river's a wanderer, a nomad, a tramp. She doesn't choose one place to set up her camp. The river's a winder through valley and hill. She twists and she turns. She just cannot thus be still. The river's a hoarder and she buries down deep all those little treasures she wants to keep. The river's a baby. She gurgles and hums and sounds like she's happily sucking her thumbs. The river's a singer and she dances along. The countryside echoes the notes of her song. So this is the recitation of the poem. Here you can see wanderer, nomad, winder, hoarder, baby, singer, these all are personifying the river. These are actually the metaphors used. You can see the word meanings here. Nomad means a person who moves from one place to other place with family and belongings. Tramp, a person who has no home or job. And keeps moving from place to place. Winder, not straight with twist and turns. Hoarder, person who collects and stores things. Goggles, sound like a baby when it's happy. Or like the water quickly flowing through a narrow space. So these are the meanings. Let's uh, summarize the poem and then the explanation we will do. Summary, the river is about the gentle and harsh facets of river. The poem clearly describes about the features, functions and destructive power of the river. The poet 
gives the river human characteristics. Some of these characteristics include being a wanderer, a nomad, a tramp, a hoarder, a baby, a singer, and finally a monster that will swallow you next. The poem contains a variety of verbs to indicate how the river moves. The river is said to be a winder and thus twists and turns. In addition, it also gurgles and hums like a baby. Interestingly, it also sings, dances, gobbles and solos. The poem has been clearly and systematically written because each stanza describes one feature and function of the river as it menders downstream. So now I will explain you the poem stanza wise. Okay children. So explanation in stanza 1. The river is characterized as a wanderer, a nomad and a tramp. The focus in stanza 1 is about the words wanderer, nomad and tramp. The river is like a person, a wanderer who keeps on moving from one place to other without stopping at any particular place or for long. Same goes to the river which continues flowing and never stops. In stanza 2, the river is characterized as a winder. It keeps twisting and turning and just can't seem to be able to keep still as if it does not rest or stops. Even though there are valleys or hills up front, the river will continue following by adapting the surface of the earth. It talks about the inability of the river to remain at rest like a child who is unable to keep still. We will look in stanza 3. In stanza 3, the river is portrayed as a hoarder. The river is like a person, a hoarder, who likes to accumulate or gather things which are well hidden or guarded from others at its base or bottom. Because when river flows, it won't stop to evade things which come across its way. The river will carry all the things with it and bury them in the river bed. All the hidden things at the bottom of the river gives it a mysterious aura. Now here you see in stanza 4, the river is pictured as a baby. The sound of running water of a river is characterized as the sound of a baby gurgling humming and sucking his thumb. In addition, a baby's voice sometimes can be too loud and sometimes it can be too slow. Same goes to the river. Whenever he goes fast down the stream, the sound is loud and when it comes to more flat ground, the sound lessens and sometimes it cannot be heard. Now in stanza 5, the river is portrayed as a singer, seeing that river's movement is significant is to the movement of the singer on the stage while moving, the river moves with sounds and sound of the flowing water of the river resonates and is heard throughout the countryside. The river is said to be a monster which can cause massive destruction when it's angry. Because when the water level increases and the speed of the stream is boosted, it will be a disaster. That no one could stop it until it alleviates itself. It shows how a calm river can turn into a destructive force of nature. Especially during a flood which in turn can destroy properties and even cause death to people. So this is all about the poem River. And your work is to write the poem and the word meanings in your English literature copy. This is your homework. Okay, children, see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.